Hello everyone, this is Suraj Sharma and welcome to our next video on Indian economic problems and we are going through unit 1 nature and structure of Indian economy and the topic is utilization of resources human and natural part 1 in part 1 we will be discussing about human resources and in the next part we will be discussing about natural resources and uh, if you have any queries you can email me and uh, you can text me on my number so what are the objectives in last class we have gone through the interrelationship between growth and composition of Indian economy and we have seen the uh, growth prospect of uh, uh, different sectors and uh, uh, economic activities and their role in uh, the growth of Indian economy in this class uh, we are going to first uh, see what actually resources are then uh, 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 why optimum utilization of resources is so important for an economy and uh, then we'll be particularly focusing on human resource and uh, we'll see the scenario in Indian economy now what are economic resources here we were particularly focusing on economic resources only so economic resources are actually the factors of production and as we have already gone through uh, a simple production function that uh, why is the function of capital labor and available land and AT here uh, denotes the available technology so these are actually the inputs and uh, when we club these inputs in a, in a, in a predefined proportion then we get output that is production so factors or uh, economic resources are actually the inputs uh, for production uh, now economic resources can be divided broadly into two uh, uh, types one is human and the other is non-human uh, in human resource we particularly talk about labor and management why management uh, is there is only because of the complexity involved in the production function when we talk about large scale productions so uh, human resource management becomes very important so that is why uh, here management is uh, uh, called human resource and then the non-human resources are other than human resources like physical capital land technology etc now what are the importance of resources uh, 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 the importance of resources lies here uh, in this word scarce or scarcity so uh, this scarcity can be seen uh, in the definition of economics given by uh, 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 professor robbins is like economics is, is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses why we're talking about ends ends means uh, the the endless human wants human wants are endless and uh, we uh, we actually uh, want to accomplish so many things with limited resources uh, we have limited uh, labor we have limited skilled labor we have limited physical capital limited land limited natural resources so these limited resources are actually can be used for uh, for many reasons uh, that is why there are alternative uses of these scarce resources uh, like an economy can uh, cannot decide between uh, between uh, 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 between uh, 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 whether to produce food grain first or to build roads and flyovers uh, first so uh, uh, these scarce resources uh, have alternative use and uh, an economy uh, uh, has to decide uh, 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 whether to produce food grain first with with, with that limited uh, resources or to to build uh, roads and flyovers or, or to first put this into defense or any other thing so uh, and, uh, and actually the precise proportion of each factor is needed for production like if you want to produce a pen you would be needing uh, raw material you would be needing a particular uh, uh, labor and you would be needing capital to install a plan to plant to to produce pens for the purpose optimum allocation of resources is very important if you do 
uh, optimize the allocation of resources uh, in a particular uh, uh, production uh, then the wastage will occur there and we don't want to waste these scare resources so the importance of resources lies uh, in the definition of economics given by Robbins now human resources or what we call human capital human resource is actually the only living resource is the only resource which actually give potential and push to the other resources like physical capital land uh, and technology this refers to knowledge skill competency and ability of people to perform labor so what does it mean by knowledgeable skilled and healthy labor force is, is, is a capital for economy like uh, physical capital so uh, the importance of human capital or human resource uh, can be seen in uh, in these comments by uh, famous economists like Ed, uh, according to gm meyer the process of acquiring and increasing the number of persons who have skills education and experience which are critical for economic and political development of the country so this is the importance of a person who have his skills education and experience and this is actually very critical for economic and political development now according to galbraith we now get the larger part of industrial growth not from more capital investment here capital investment is actually uh, denoting the physical capital investment but from investment in men and what is investment in men is actually uh, uh, giving proper skill to uh, the masses giving proper education to masses uh, giving them health facilities so that um, a healthy a skilled and a knowledgeable labor force can be built and uh, according to galbert this the, the industrial growth is accounting for investment in in this population uh, not only because of physical capital investment the next is according to mint it, it is now increasingly recognized that many underdeveloped countries may be held back not so much by a shortage of savings as by a shortage of skills and knowledge resulted in a limited capacity of their organizational framework to absorb capital in productive investment so this is actually a human resource of shortage of human resource can result in uh, limited capacity of production and it, it uh, you, you will not be able to absorb the physical capital in your economy if your human resource uh, is not that much capable so this is the importance of human resource now if we talk about human resource in india we'll have to first uh, uh, learn about what is labor force what is workforce and what is um, unemployment rate actually and uh, uh, if you see what is labor force labor force is actually either uh, working or available for work and why i'm including eligible here is because labor in uh, force will include the eligible uh, uh, population only those who are eligible for work it means the child labor is not there so employed and unemployed both will constitute the labor force uh, those who are working are actually the employed and those who are available for work and not getting work are actually unemployed now workforce is actually employed or working population that is called workforce this is the difference between workforce and labor force labor force includes both employed and unemployed but workforce includes only employed people unemployed available for and willing to work but not getting work for a particular reference period on his existing wage rates okay now what does it mean by this particular reference period this reference period can be uh, an year can be a month a week or a day uh, we can we can calculate unemployment rate labor force workforce participation rate on the basis of uh, different different periods i'm not going in uh, here into very much detail because the the level of the 
video is only to the bachelor level and we'll stick to it now labor for participation rate what is what does it mean percentage of persons in the labor force in the population it means it is the proportion of population which is actually in the labor force so this would be a uh, uh, this would be in percentage terms the same uh, thing goes with the worker population ratio uh, the percentage of employed persons in the population the third thing is proportion unemployed percentage of persons unemployed in the population and as you see that if you subtract worker population ratio from labor force participation rate then you will get proportion unemployed because here the base is same and the base is total population in all these three but unemployment rate is very different from proportion unemployed why is it so because in unemployment rate the base is labor force and you can see that unemployment rate is actually percentage of persons unemployed among the persons in the labor force so this is obvious that unemployment rate would be uh, higher than the proportion unemployed because the base here is a smaller that is labor force and base here is bigger in proportion unemployed that is total population now labor force participation rate some data from india and uh, this is the table for males and as you can see that the data is from 1993 to 2017 18 the latest available data with us and uh, the source of data is nss surveys of different rounds as you can see here the status usual status and uh, cws cws is uh, current weekly status and usual is principal status plus subsidiary status so as you see the labor force participation rate in 1993 in rural areas was 56.1 percent and it has uh, reduced to 54.9 percent in 2017-18 in rural areas according to cws this is not uh, uh, there is no such difference between the participation rate and this is 54.7 uh, percent in 1993-4 and uh, in 2017-18 it is 54.4 percent so there is no such change in rural areas as you see uh, as as we see the uh, uh, the participation rates for males in urban areas this is uh, this there is an increase over the years from 1993 to 2017 and uh, with both the approaches next is labor force participation rate for females as you see that uh, the situation uh, is pathetic uh, comparing to male participation rates for the same reference period the female participation rates labor for participation rates is very uh, very low and actually the situation is deteriorating as you see uh, uh, the labor for participation rate for female in 1993 was 33% percent and it has gone down to 18.2% in 1780 like as in urban areas the situation is very worse and the labor force participation rate is very low in urban areas uh, many studies have gone through this scenario and uh, one of the reason may be uh, in the starting phase of the growth the labor force participation rates for female goes down and with the uh, growth uh, uh, with the um, uh, with economic growth the labor force participation rate for females increases uh, so we'll have to see in near future that whether this this scenario changes or not now workers participation rate is is a rate uh, which is actually telling you how uh, uh, how much proportion of the population is actually employed so for male and female you see in rural areas there is a big difference the difference continues in urban areas and uh, uh, figures in parenthesis you can see these are the labor force participation rate and the difference between these two is actually the proportion unemployed the difference between these two is proportion unemployed now uh, uh, 
talking about the literacy rates and life expectancy for India, as you know that educated and healthy India can lead us uh, to to uh, to get better opportunities and our human capital. Uh, can be uh, very beneficial for us so as you see the literacy rates have gone through a drastic change from 40 uh, percent to 74 percent in 2018 and uh, as you see the life expectancy have gone through a drastic change from mere 41 years to 69 uh, years at birth so uh, this is this is the educational scenario this is the health scenario it means better health faci facilities are provided now and uh, uh, better education is given is given to the masses but the situation uh, as we compare with the advanced economies uh, is uh, um, much of average now uh, lastly we'll talk about demographic dividend and what demographic dividend is actually it refers to the growth in an economy that is the result of a change in age structure of country's population and this age structure uh, and this change in age structure is uh, is uh, happens uh, because of the demographic transition uh, 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 demographic transition uh, within a country happens because of the development phases different development phases and and as you see this demographic dividend is actually the population aged between 15 to 64 and what is the proportion of the aged between 15 to 64 of, uh, in the total population and as you see for India uh, this was a mere 56% in 1960 and it has gone through 66.77% uh, in 2018 so actually two-third of the total population in India is uh, is is uh, is aged between 50 15 to 64 that is the age group for working uh, uh, population we, we consider this age group uh, as those those who can work so this demographic dividend is actually very much related to the human uh, capital and how this demographic dividend is going to be used uh, is the most promising challenge between every economy now points to consider in the last is that a healthy educated and skilled population is a bliss to an economy it's an uh, uh, it's it's a capital if not physical but uh, a living capital for you however rapid increase in population can adversely affect the resource allocation and retard the development process so uh, as, as as we can see that in uh, many of the developing economies like india and china uh, the population is is increasing very rapidly and this population increase uh, 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 on the one hand uh, gives you the labor force means increasing labor force uh, so particip labor for participation rate would be high but what about the workforce how many of them are actually going uh, in the workforce so the difference between labor force and workforce uh, should be reduced so that this this demographic dividend what we are talking about uh, uh, can be utilized the next thing is education and skills according to the needs of markets uh, if, if we don't produce uh, uh, human capital according to the needs of the markets and the coming needs of the markets then uh, 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 there would be a large labor force but the work for participation rate would be very low as compared to labor for participation rate the, the next thing is we actually want to reduce the unemployment rate and proportion unemployed and this is one of the macroeconomic uh, target of any economy so uh, hitting this um, uh, this is actually uh, 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 considering one of the main problem of developing economies and why we are going through all these things why we are doing uh, every effort to uh, to reduce unemployment rate is is is, is to uh, increase per capita income so that output per per capita can be increased and uh, the poverty can be vanished uh, so this these are the points to consider uh, for future uh, uh, policy initiatives uh, thank you so much for being with me and in the next chapter we'll be talking about natural resources and their role in indian economy thank you so much